Hey, welcome to Aqua Aquaponics. We've added a couple of koi to our pond. Our pond plants are doing well. We're feeding our koi, but we do have to be a little bit careful because we don't really have any significant biofiltration other than the plants for this pond area. The plan today is to take this tote as well as just some materials that we bought online and at the hardware store and to build our own DIY biofilter. Awkward. Maybe you just stumbled across this video and you're wondering what it is. Well, this channel's basically a story. It's the story of a staff and student project that started two years ago. Everything on the inside and outside has been built by students from small landscaping projects to some larger renewable energy stuff that we tackled this past spring. This has resulted in a space that is open for community groups. We can offer it with no overhead because it is off grid and it's been a fantastic place to tinker whether it's on some larger projects or some smaller projects. And speaking of smaller projects, let's figure out how to make a DIY pond filter. This biofiltration will hopefully help with the clarity of the water and also allow us to maybe start pushing some of our aquaponic stuff just a little bit further. It's gonna be fed by the 12 volt pump at the back of the pond. Uh, and our hope is that this will help with some of the water clarification. Now the 12 volt pump that actually runs this filtration system is its own little system. It's hooked up to a little 10 amp charge controller, which is hooked up to its own panel. The hand wavy bit that you see here is really talking about the biomedia that will make this biofilter work. We have some hydrodon and then also some stuff we got off of Amazon, but stuff with a whole bunch of surface area where the yucky, gunky microbes that you want to do the nitrification can start to form a population. The inlet is three quarter inch PVC, just because that's what's coming off the pump. It also has a coupler on one end so that we can just pop it on and then pop it off as we want. I did drill some holes because we were going for a little bit of a rain shower approach when it comes to actually filtering in, as you can kind of see here. In order to feed it in and out, uh, we got these uni seals. Uh, we found a place in Canada called Grow Dudes, which uh, we had a hard time before finding uni seals. These things are nice because they're not as expensive as some of those bulkhead connectors you want. And all that you do is you drill a hole. Uh, online you can find kind of what the hole sizes are for different size pipe. And then the pipe just pressure fits through there. So it pushes through and in that way it, it forms a little bit of a seal. Now these are nice because we can also use them on surfaces that aren't necessarily flat. But we can put it right here on the corner which is going to be perfect for uh, where it's going to get fed in. So probably worth just mentioning that I don't profess to be any sort of expert. Uh, the reason why I do like to use uni seals is just for some of the experiences we've had with our aquaponics and hydroponics stuff in the halls of our school. They are really useful, especially like I mentioned for some of those curved surfaces. The one thing that I didn't do here that I probably should have is just use a little bit of water to just make that insertion process just a little bit easier. Now for our outlet, we went a little bit bigger. Uh, so we have some one inch uni seals and some one inch pipe here uh, for the water that's actually coming out. Now we we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. Because our feed doesn't run 24 seven, I did want a little bit of siphoning action for if the water does shut off. I don't want any water sitting over there so that any of the microbes in there will kind of starve of oxygen. One thing I know about that nitrification process based off of some of our experiences with the aquaponic system in our hall is that anytime we have a lack of oxygen, things go horribly wrong. So I'm hoping that by having it siphon, we're not going to have just standing water. On a cutting with a hole saw note, I like to have the drill bit grab and then run it in reverse to give some nice smooth holes in all the plastic totes that we use. And with this one inch pipe, I thought we'd put it in maybe two different orientations. One I'm just going to leave open ended but with a T here so that it feeds from both ways. So as you can see my measuring method at this point is to eyeball it and then hope it's close enough. It's a little bit of a drain. Now this is the part where you'll notice that I wish I would have had a little bit of water especially for this longer section. I was eventually able to brute force the longer one in and then accurately cut it to length. Went with a little bit of an elbow to try to get it to siphon. And then you can see inside the tote we have 
two one-inch drains with our three-quarter inch feed. This likely means that the siphon's redundant, so I don't know why I did that. Ideally, with the media side, we would go coarser to finer with some type of screen, but hydrotin is what we had. We have lots of it. And then to, in order to filter out most of our solids, I got this material off of Amazon. I uh, tried to find the wrong tool for the job so that I could cut it and then put it into place. And so this will hopefully keep most of the solids out of the bottom area and give us some of that solids filtration. At this point, you probably look at the filter and you have the same thought that I do. This is pretty crude. Uh, but the principles are pretty sound. We have some biomedia. We could probably use more of it. We have water that's circulating, so it's going to be constantly oxygenated. And this should hopefully give us a little bit of an improvement. The nice thing about this as a starting point is everything can be changed from the biomedia that we chose to where we put it to even how we configured the outlet themselves. I think next I'm going to be on the hunt for some sponges just to bring the level of that filter cloth up a little bit higher because it doesn't need to be sitting that low and any other media that we can get in there for, again, that yucky stuff to grow and flourish, that's great. As you can see, we have some water lettuce and some hyacinth as well as some aquaponic lettuce that community member is trying as an experiment to help clean the water as well once that nitrification process happens. So thanks for checking in with us at Awkward Aquaponics. Uh, hopefully this little project was useful. We're hoping that by having a biofilter now, we can think about this as a little bit more of an aquaponic system versus just a thermal mass, which is how we've been treating it prior to this. You can buy products that will do the filtration of your pond off the shelf, uh, but we wanted to do something that was off grid. So by tying it into our 12 volt system, we're hoping that we can get some extra filtration, we can get some extra nitrification happening without having to tie into our off-grid solar setup. We can think about using that electricity for things like grow lights as our growing season gets shorter here up north in Canada. If you like what we're doing, uh, make sure you hit subscribe down below, check out some of our other videos, share it with your friends, and we'll see you next time on Awkward Aquaponics. Awkward!